ancient walls and towers. Well, this is one of the world's most ancient cities, which now has motorways in its midst. Pathé Pictorial's magic carpet has never taken you to a place where a magic carpet was more appropriate. And whether it's a jet aircraft flying high over Istanbul, giving you a cloudy, lofty view of the mystery city of mosques, or a helicopter carpet at minaret height, you drink the magic in. The Santa Sofia Mosque, once a Christian church and now a museum, always makes you feel, even when your feet are on the ground, that you yourself are up in the air. the Golden Horn and the Galata Bridge, where at ferry boat level, they say, you'll meet everyone in the world who deserves to be called a human being, which seems unfair because here it's a man's world. Women are mostly veiled or hidden away. This is the gateway to Asia. This is Europe's last tentative outpost. It shows its ambivalence mainly by male predominance. But Istanbul largely consists of exciting waterways. This Galata Bridge is Istanbul. People and mystery and manual labor. Here on the porter's backs, you can analyze life halfway between east and west. You'll learn the secret of this strange place as readily from the pelican as you will from its mysterious but most hospitable inhabitants. Halfway house life, Europe and Asia. And a really lovely thing, sweet, fresh fish. Fish from the Bosphorus, and the custom here is to grill it on charcoal. It's a custom that should spread because it's delicious. A curbside barbecue, conceived in the east and happily moving west. Go on, just dig your teeth into that bit of succulence. Or to savor the subtle flavors of the Orient, buy a bread ring and see how different and delightful it tastes. If you're anybody here, you have your shoes shined. They're dusty in 10 minutes' time, but you do it because you're floating on air most of the time in a city that's a million different places, itself split between two continents with only ferry boats threading it across that narrow, exciting waterway that divides us from Asia and dramatically links Russia and the Black Sea with the Mediterranean and the world at large. This waterway, among other things, is a city street with local transport. What a mix-up of an ancient and a modern city it is. What a smoky beacon at the crossroads of east and west and north and south. What a fascinating series of contradictions and enigmas. Mosques like this crumbled here in earthquakes, and wooden houses were built by Sultan's command to resist such destruction. From on high, you can see the hybrid results because some huddled streets survived, while fire, in turn, cleared acres of wooden buildings for these bold new concepts. Istanbul is a patchwork quilt on the shores of a waterway even more fascinating than it is itself. We are cruising now on the Bosphorus. The Dolmabashi Palace, the summer residence of generations of proud sultans, but more particularly, the last view you'll get of the continent that cradled civilization, because half a mile across the water, it is Europe no more. See the walls they built round the last bastion. Byzantium, later to be Constantinople, the Roman Empire's capital, now Istanbul, a city that is more eternal than Rome itself, which though changing, keeps its origins and its essence intact as it grows. This is all part and parcel of Istanbul, perhaps the loveliest and certainly the laziest part. For Istanbul has now stretched out to occupy the whole 17-mile length of this fisherman's paradise. And look, those fish are still alive. Here you buy blue fish or the famous phosphorus swordfish slices, and a boy brings round coffee for you as you talk with a stallholder or haggle over the price. The same as in the bazaars. Good, strong Turkish coffee, as sweet as those fresh-caught fish are themselves. You'll also find round here that any old tin will serve as a barbecue. This scene could be on the Cornish coast or somewhere remote, and it's hard to believe it's part of a sprawling city that the Crusaders knew, 
a strategic point on the map of the world, besieged in turn by Goths and Huns, Slavs and Arabs, and finally captured 500 years ago, when this castle was built by the Turkish Sultan Mohammed the Conqueror. This was the stronghold from which he first attacked and then defended the city that he made the capital of the Ottoman Empire. thinking this narrow sea is a river, forgetting it's the frontier between continents, and that the far bank is a land mass stretching to India, Burma, China, and the Pacific Ocean. There's another castle on the Asiatic side, more elegant houses and the sleepy feeling you still get in the south of France, glide into this haven of peace in the very outskirts of a crowded city. At intervals, you will hear the call of prayer to remind you that you're in a land of mosques and minarets. And at intervals, you'll hear the siren of a ship bound for the Black Sea, which is barely five miles away. For the rest, you might easily be on the Riviera, with its gay hotels and cafes in the sun. Istanbul and the Bosphorus have all this. Istanbul and the Bosphorus have mystery, too. Inscrutable, age-old mystery somehow symbolized by the Hubble bubble pipe. You order one at any restaurant, a glowing charcoal chip perched over the tobacco to keep it alight. You smoke and dream and contemplate, and the smoke is as wispy blue as the blue mosque, which with its six minarets is of all things the essence of this exciting place. There's no need to say any more about Istanbul. Imagination can do the rest. <laughs> 